Too much of anything is a bad thing. Life without balance results in an unbalanced life. Walking around the block every day is good. Walking or running six hours a day is bad. It's obsessive. Unless, of course, you make your living as a marathon runner. Then you're doing your job. Eating an apple a day is good. Eating only apples is bad. You won't get all the protein and vitamins and nutrients your body needs. Working hard, burning the midnight oil, doing it until is good. Working nonstop, never taking a vacation, never having any fun, never spending quality time with the people you love, working, working, working day after day, month after month, never taking a break year after year is bad. If you've got your nose to the grindstone all the time, how are you ever going to spot new opportunities, consider new ideas? It doesn't work that way. You've got to stop and ponder where you've been and where you're going. You've got to reflect so you know if you're even on the right track. Everyone has heard the story of Willie Lohman in the play Death of a Salesman. Willie was a workaholic. He typified the old-fashioned concept of success. After all, if you're always working, you must be successful. No, it doesn't work that way. For workaholics, there's never enough work. They can work 10, 12, 14 hours a day, take two jobs, work them back to back. The only satisfaction is fighting off sleep, denying life's pleasures, getting more tasks done. Some people are impressed with this type of behavior. But just because a workaholic spends too much time working, that doesn't mean he or she ends up with the most money. These people are generally more task-oriented than results-oriented. They're busy being busy, not busy being productive. Workaholics generally end up alienating their families, losing their health, facing a crisis of values. Now, wouldn't you prefer a life of productivity rather than a life of tasks? Of course. When you schedule your time and take advantage of your time, you can work smarter instead of working longer and you'll probably end up getting more done than the workaholic and still have time for other things in life. Enlightened self-interest says, I will look for new ways to work smarter by focusing on doing more per hour instead of doing more hours. It says I will run my day so my day doesn't run me. Enlightened self-interest also says that a life worth living comes from a life of balance and moderation. Too much of anything, even good things, will sooner or later throw you off track. Now, here's a key technique that you can use in your life to help keep you on the right track. This technique is called visual chain thinking. Ambitious people don't see each step toward their goals as a singular step, each discipline as a singular discipline, each project as a singular project, each sale as a singular sale. With everything they do and with every discipline they adhere to, they see it all as part of a chain, a link in the chain of events and actions that will lead them to their final destination. Every action and every discipline today is a link in the chain. Every action and every discipline tomorrow is a link. Every action and every discipline in the future is a link. When you can see that every link in the chain will eventually lead you to the things you want most out of life, to the person you want to become, then you won't grow discouraged or fearful or impatient with today. When you can see where you're going through visual chain thinking, even on the toughest days, you'll keep building your ambition by knowing where you're going, not just where you are today. Part of this visual chain thinking is built when you decide on your direction, when you can see where you're going to end up before you get there. When you can see California while staring at the east side of a 14,000 foot mountain. And building your visual chain of thought begins when you have well-defined plans for your career, your family activities, your investments, and your health. Your plans and goals are your visual chain, knowing where you're going before you get there. Develop a plan, a game plan. It's ironic how we all understand the importance of mapping out a strategy for a football game or a basketball game. Not one professional team in the world begins a game without a complete strategy. But few of us take the time to map out a strategy for our lives, a game plan. But it's important. 
Here's the first rule for your game plan of life. Don't start your day until you have it finished. Don't begin your activities of the day until you know exactly what you plan to accomplish. Don't start your day until you have it planned and do this every day. I know all this writing takes time and a disciplined effort, but remember that value is the fruitful result of discipline, not hope. Once you've mastered the art of planning your day, you're ready for the next level. Don't start your week until you have it finished. Don't begin your activities of the week until you know exactly what you plan to accomplish. Don't start your week until you have it planned. Just imagine what life would be like if you took time out of every Sunday to plan your week. Come Friday, you won't be saying, boy, did this week fly by. Where did it go? What did I do? No, if you plan your week before you start it, you'll know exactly what you want to do, what you want to accomplish, what you need to work on. If you learn to plan your days as part of your overall game plan for the week, the parts will fit much better. Your days will be better, more effective. You'll be working smarter, not harder. And when you've learned to plan your week, guess what? You've got to plan your month. Don't start your month until it's finished. By developing a game plan for your days, your weeks, your months, by developing and following your game plan, your days and weeks and months all become part of a bigger plan, a bigger design, a long-term view of your life, a visual chain. You'll start gaining a greater perspective of it all because you are planning. It takes great discipline on your part, but it will soon lead to a new habit, a habit of mastering your time, a habit of discipline that will lead you to the good life. Now, if visually seeing the future is new to you, if you've never developed a game plan before, let me offer a few tips. There are two things that you need to understand before you create a game plan. Number one, a game plan, a visual chain of your future is like a spreadsheet. Instead of listing numbers, you list activities. It's like a to-do list. And number two, the technique of developing a game plan can be used for a single day, a single project, or a variety of projects that are happening simultaneously. Here's how you do it. First of all, you need to buy a pad of graph paper. Game plans work best on graph paper. So take a sheet of graph paper and make vertical columns of the number of days this plan is to cover. Then on the left-hand side of the paper, write the heading activities. Under this heading, list all of the activities to be accomplished within your time frame. Let's say, for example, that you've got one week to finalize a marketing plan. It's an overwhelming amount of work to complete, but it's got to be done. So break it down piece by piece. The best way to start is by listing all of the individual components on the left-hand side of the page. Now, some of these things need to be completed before others can be started. You need to have your market research results in before you can determine your target market. You need to know your target market before you can develop your marketing strategy. You need to have your marketing strategy before you can create a budget for collateral materials and so on. When you break down the project piece by piece, deadline by deadline, you can be more effective in delegating the appropriate pieces of the puzzle. And you can be more effective in doing your own work while orchestrating the rest. The final result of developing a visual chain, your game plan, is a clear visual presentation of the tasks before you. Keep your game plan in plain sight. Put it up in your office where you can easily look at it. Have a copy of it at home and tape it to the refrigerator. Keep a copy in your journal for quick reference. Your game plan will serve as a constant reminder of all that you need to do to get where you want to go. If you're doing all that you're scheduled to do, game plans are very rewarding. And the discipline of developing and following a game plan is exciting. Day by day by day, week by week by week, month by month by month, you'll see the magic of your dreams and plans turning into reality. It's an incredible feeling of being in charge of your life, your surroundings, your future. It's like creating a work of art on the biggest canvas imaginable. It's creative. It's beautiful. This is powerful stuff to dream a dream, plan for the dream, 
and then to watch your dream turn into reality. And what's really powerful about creating game plans is that you can see your future right before your eyes. So on those days when your energy isn't up to par, your enthusiasm is a little low, your ambition isn't pulling you, and your attitude isn't on the high side, on those days, use your game plan to see how far you've come and take time to realize just exactly where it is that you're headed for. On those days, it's your discipline and visual chain of the future that will pull you ahead. It can't possibly set you back. It'll pull you ahead. Develop a game plan for your life and make sure that it includes more than work projects. Make sure that your game plan includes time for recreation, time for reflection, time for exercise, time for health, time for spirituality. Let's say you've developed your plan and you've penciled in writing a report from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Well, what if you don't do your best report writing this early in the morning? What if you do this kind of work best at 3 in the afternoon? Then juggle your projects around a little. Know yourself well enough to know what you do best at different times of the day, of the week, of the month. Know the best time for you to accomplish a certain type of task and schedule it during those times. You have to work with your game plan in order for it to best work for you. And you have to maintain the discipline of working your plan until, until you've got it down. In the end, it is your own discipline that acts as the magic catalyst to give substance and depth to your ambition, to achieve your own plans and dreams, to have what you want to have and to become what you want to become, your consistent self-discipline is the magic catalyst. The ultimate question cannot be whether you are going to make the fundamental disciplines your own. The ultimate question is when. With the intense and consistent application of worthy disciplines, we have the individual and collective capacity to change ourselves, our incomes, our attitudes, our lifestyles, and our effect on other people. We can change opinions, we can change leadership, we can even change the direction of our nation.